Israel-Iran war. Let's take out some time to discuss what could be the biggest escalation right now in this conflict. To understand that, let's go 43 years back to what Israel did in Iraq in 1971, also known as Operation Opera. The map that you see on your screens is of uh, the Tuwetha Nuclear Research Center, 11 kilometers southeast of Baghdad in Iraq. In 1976, Iraq purchased an OSIRIS-class nuclear reactor from France. While Iraq and France maintained that the reactor named OSIRAC by the French was intended for peaceful scientific research, the Israelis viewed the reactor with suspicion, believing it was designed to produce nuclear weapons that could escalate the ongoing Arab-Israeli conflict. On June 7, 1981, a flight of uh, Israeli Air Force F-16A fighter aircraft with an escort of F-15As bombed the uh, Osirak reactor deep inside Iraq. Israel called the operation an act of self-defense, saying that uh, the reactor had less than a month to go before it might have become critical. The Israeli operation came a year after the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force had caused minor damage to the same nuclear facility in Operation Scorch Sword. Uh, with the damage having been subsequently repaired by French technicians. Iran sought to thwart Iraq's uh, progress in nuclear research and development due to the Iran-Iraq war, fearing the possibility of any potential Iraqi nuclear weapons being used on Iranian soil in the future. The most feared escalation in the current conflict after Iran struck Israel with 180 missiles, missiles is a similar air raid on Iran's nuclear reactions, uh, hence causing a major escalation in the ongoing war. Iran's current nuclear facilities are uh, spread out. One in Nanitz, located in the uh, Isfahan province, about 180 miles south of Tehran. The facility is uh, housed in underground bunkers and includes the fuel enrichment plant and uh, the pilot fuel enrichment plant. Uh, the Isfahan, a large nuclear technology center on the outskirts of uh, the area, Iran's second largest city. The center includes the fuel plate fabrication plant and the uranium conversion facility as well. The Karun nuclear power station, a pressurized water reactor uh, which is located in Darkuin near the Iraq border. And number four, in uh, Hormuz, the nuclear power station located in Sirik and used for electricity production. The pilot uranium laser enrichment plant located in Lashkar Abad and used for uranium enrichment using lasers. The Fardo enrichment site which was dug uh, into a mountain, the 2015 deal with major powers did not allow Iran to enrich at Fardo at all. It now has more than 1000 centrifuges operating there, a fraction of them advanced IR6 machines enriching to up to 60%. In addition, Iran recently doubled the number of centrifuges installed at the Fordo, with all the new ones being IR6 machines. There's another one in Kondab, which is unfinished. It's a research reactor that uh, has presented the risk of a proliferation under the 2015 deal. The construction was halted, the reactor's core was removed and filled with concrete to make it unusable. There's another one in Bushehr, Iran's only operating nuclear power plant using Russian fuel that is then shipped back to uh, Russia. We'll talk about this, we'll talk about some of the uh, other important issues which pertain directly towards Iran's uh, nuclear program with our guest joining us on the show at this point in time is Group Captain Dr. V. N. Jha, former Indian Air Force officer. Group Captain Dr. M. J. Augustine Vinod, former fighter pilot, MiG-21 is also joining us on the show. Asif Ramiz Daudi, Middle East expert, also joins us at this point in time to talk more about this. Group Captain Jha, I'll begin with you. Well, you know, when you talk about nuclear and uh, uranium enrichment, we all know, in fact, the West has also known, the Obamas knew, the Clintons knew that Iran was secretly, discreetly working on this nuclear plant. Now that Iran finds itself in the middle of this escalation, in this war, how dangerous do you think Iran can be when it comes to world peace? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vinit. Uh, I also welcome, I, I was uh, having a tough time in recognize my uh, fellow Gusty, uh, I still call him, uh, to Captain Augustine, he was there with us at uh, Bidar Air Force Station. Gusty, welcome here. Uh, I can see, barely see any hair on your head. Uh, welcome. Uh, look, Vineet, nuclear technology is always uh, uh, full with uh, uh, problems, uh, covertness, uh, some sort of secrecy, it has been always there. Uh, you know, so much and so that even in our neighborhood, 
Pakistan had had it by you know, 89, 90. Uh, but we uh, or the world, so-called world, discovered only later when <clears throat> within seven days they gave the loan back to India uh, and they exploited the technology within seven days or something. You know, it's a, it's a thing that everyone knows, but no one is ready to acknowledge it, especially the superpowers. Uh, we know how the covert operations, covert uh, technologies of all these are transferred. China, uh, you know, is, is the main uh, uh, culprit in this, of the covert uh, uh, technology being transferred to someone else. Maybe, you know, there's a line of uh, evils, what they call it, North Korea, China, and uh, Pakistan. Uh, if Pakistan and China have already, uh, which they have, there is no reason uh, not to believe that Iran also would have acquired it. Of course, Iran had problems. It, they were applied sanctions, and thereafter, somewhere just beyond 32% of the enrichment, their uh, subsequent uh, refinement, reprocessing was halted, and they were stuck at somewhere around 72%. Because from 72%, they had to do three uh, uh, more refurbishment, reprocessing, with which they would have acquired that you the weapon grade uranium the last report that we had got at the time of uh, uh, covid was that there was some trace of 92 percent uranium that they had processed uh, but you know there was no confirmatory thing but then all said and done if 32 percent trace uh, 92 percent uranium trace was found at uh, uh, at the facility there is no reason not to believe that they would have got it if they have this, then only few more technologies are uh, required, which everyone will be willing to uh, grant them because this Islamic bomb is essentially against USA, against Israel, and against the Western countries. And those countries will be eager to uh, give it to us, Pakistan, China, and Russia. All three of them will be eager to give them. Uh, very little uh, steps are required beyond this achievement of the uranium grid. Uh, it is the, uh, the the implosion technology that they have to have it, and the integration into the warhead uh, technology they need to have it. This is already a proven technology with most of the nations, so there will be no problem uh, to say that yes, Iran can have it. But it is it is easier said than done. Uh, Any time that these technologies are granted, surely uh, there will be requirement of uh, trials and. Uh, uh, other uh, uh, the trust gathering information has to be there because nuclear bomb is not a tactical bomb. It is a, it is something very very devastating, much more devastating than me and you during the discussion we think of. So it's a devastating uh, uh, you know weapon which can change the face of the world once it starts. So that is where right now it is stuck. But then. Please do remember, recall the words of Netanyahu in UN General Assembly. He said, I have got two enemies. One is the terrorists who are uh, there to uh, finish us. And secondly, he will never accept a nuclear Iran. Now, the terrorists are there on his soil. They went onto his soil on 8th October uh, 2023 and did what the world knows. I don't have to repeat there. Right now, uh, Israel is in the process of finishing Hamas. There was a uh, there was a the, the coalition with the uh, Hezbollah as well. So he is the, now uh, trying to reduce Hezbollah capability. They can't finish it. It is an ideology, but they can certainly uh, minimize their capability. That is what right now uh, Israel is doing. And thirdly, there is a whole lot of gamut of uh, uh, jihadists in, in that region. Remember, it was there in the Iraq. ISIS took birth in Israel. Al Baghdadi gave a call of uh, global Islamic Caliphate from Iraq. So Iraq is just next door to Israel. So all of them are there. And as per the information, those cells are still active of the ISIS, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, neighborhood. So all these are right now in a very very troubled picture. It is given. I'm sure Iran has stepped into this war. But that may be the only country which has stepped into it. Uh, there may be other proxies of other Islamic nation should that come to intervene in this war. So it's a very difficult, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, scenario right now. Uh, we keep our fingers crossed. I hope that things go uh, in the proper way. Uh, but right now things are looking bleak. We need. Mm. Mr. Dowdy, 
Welcome to the show. So how do you look at uh, this escalating situation? And the fact of the matter is that, you know, Iran has been ostracized by the West. And then again, it was embraced by the West. You know, it had sanctions come in. Some of these sanctions were once again taken away. You know, it collected billions of dollars by, you know, selling oil. It traded with China. It traded with Russia. Now we're back uh, to a situation where Iran holds you know, a number of resources, some of them are proxy, some of them are direct, and some of them are bought. But this does put, you know, the Middle East in a very precarious situation. Mr. Dowdy? Okay, let me, in fact, take... Mr. Dowdy, are you there with us? Okay, let me take that question to Group Captain uh, Dr. M.G. Augustine Vinod as well. Uh, sir, if you heard the, the, the question, can you please respond to that? Yeah, and um, after so many years, I'm seeing uh, Dr. Jha. Uh, being a doctor of medicine, uh, I can see over a few decades, sir, you've uh, you know moved on to strategy as well. Uh, good to see that. Uh, <laughs> you'll make uh, people like us who are doctor of philosophy run for cover. Very nicely covered. Coming to one point beneath, as uh, four things is very very clear. Uh, one is point, uh, point number one is, um, he, and you covered it in your opening statement as well, is Iran anywhere close to being nuclear? Absolutely, no one should have any doubt. It has all the elements uh, to go nuclear. Then the question is, why is it not declaring it's a nuclear? That, that it has learned from countries like India. The moment you declare yourself nuclear, because you have haves and have not clubs, you will straight away put into the have not club. Now, what have not club brings on you is large amount of sanctions. Even countries which are itching to put sanctions on you and cannot put because they don't have a local standard will suddenly have a local standard to put sanctions on you. So that Iran does not want and not now. When it wants to flex its muscle to say, I'm the second Islamic bomb, he will do so, but currently no. Second. Uh, why why it doesn't want to declare itself uh, nuclear is um, the major reason of retaliation uh, and legitimate retaliation from uh, Israel. So as long as you've kept your warhead, your delivery mechanism and your fuel separate if it is going to be a liquid fuel rocket, then you're good to go. Any one of them could be attacked, but if you have uh, uh, multiple of it and under the ground like it is there in Isfahan, like you covered beneath, then that uh, problem too is uh, sorted. Now, now comes the second point. Second point is uh, not from now, since the time of in inception of Islam, uh, their sworn enemy is uh, Jews, wherever they are. And uh, the maximum congregation happens to be currently in Israel. Uh, Pakistani passport very clearly says everywhere except uh, Israel. So that enmity is shown in uh, to the uh, you know ingrained into you from the time you are born. The reasons uh, can be discussed sometimes later. So Iran's bounden duty is to destroy Israel. Period. Now it will find a ways and means to do so, and find uh, excuses to do so. So this, if someone thinks that over a few decades it will go away, I don't think it will. It will remain, probably it will come up like the way it has come up now, and and it will probably you know die down to 20-30% and lurk over there. Kisi aur din fun uthane ke liye Point number three we need is, uh, when Israel did, uh, you know, kill two, three very important people, the pressure from uh, domestic and as well as other Shia Islamic factions on Iran because every Shia looks up to Iran as their uh, sort of messiah. So the pressure was on, on there to do some kind of a retaliatory strike. So that is why I put this image behind me. Everyone today talks about this particular image where they said 30 uh, stealth fighters of uh, in Nevedam Air Base has been taken out. Uh, by uh, these, you know, range of missiles, that 180 plus missiles that came into uh, Israel and uh, it destroyed, which is not the case. This is a peacetime location village. This is where you put your aircraft to save yourself from the elements. 
and do some maintenance activities and uh, protect your maintenance personnel from uh, sun and nevitum mind you is in the middle of a desert but during war like scenario you put it at this place so this is that particular image which uh, showed shown destroyed but these are the bunkers you see there are many plenty of bunkers just 100 to 200 meters away and that is where you will put your aeroplane and other important things in these bunkers and to ad address every single aeroplane you will require one missile one bunker which is called unit risk principle also called a urp so that is where you will keep your weapon so the third point of the tall claims of um, iran they are supposed to do tall claim because it is part of the psyops and every trained military country does it during war if you remember i don't know i'm sure you heard of stories mm -hmm. we have we have heard of stories that the young uh, you know tall claims from both sides on akashwani and uh, you know radio pakistan that um delhi pahunch gaye hain aur delhi mein kuch kar gaye hain aur delhi mein breakfast kar rahe hain ye sare cheeze it used to be there so this is part of psyops fourth and the final i mean the most important point is where do we go from here that is the biggest question because if you look at um, every day there is a new more deadly weapon that is being brought on the table the deadliest weapon is a tactical nuclear weapon or even a nuclear weapon a tnw or a, a higher kiloton uh, nuclear weapon on israel means the entire swath of israel will be uninhabitable for maybe thousands of years where will uh, jews go as opposed to israel attacking uh, iran there is plenty of place in iran which can you know be relocated so more to lose in case of nuclear conflict will be uh, israel not iran so israel should be wary of you know as in the escalatory ladder it has already reached a threshold where um, iran could be pressurized or um, you know wanting to press that button and mm. if that happens then there will be hell to play all over the world i think most part of the uh, western and the middle eastern world is already uh, under war only the south asia is not yet directly in the conflict if it does happen then we are looking at a third world war kind of scenario which i don't think this blue planet can take it anymore hmm. so we have to as countries responsible countries need to come together pressurize united nation was formed for this reason that well that good you brought up with the united nations mr dowdy also yeah. joins us on the program mr dowdy you know the role of the united nations uh, was invented was characterized was disposed uh, or predisposed for you know an eventuality like this you know to broker peace between two countries and adversaries but you know there have been more wars in the presence of united nations than there were before it was born that really takes you know the cream out of the reason why the united nations was born and it also puts the focus that uh, you know there is no governing body when it comes to two enemies going at each other and israel and iran are perfect perfect examples of that uh, that's a very relevant question vinny and we know that why the united nation was in fact formed what was the objective purpose and especially when two adversaries like israel palestine iran or even if you look at the other parts of the world if they have issues they have conflicts who is the one going to interfere intervene and uh, take some kind of serious kinds of uh, you know measures and solutions the problem is that the united nations tried a lot and in some cases it fails but here in this particular contest if i tell you vinny uh, like uh, in 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 israel after 7th of october what what happened and the retaliation what, what is in fact we have seen is such that it's so serious thousands tens of thousands of innocent human lives were were gone and the united nations resolutions the global pressure 
even some uh, you know friendly countries like France, etc. They all said that okay, it's not uh, in the uh, right interest of the country in in particular and for the entire world in general that if it esca escalates. But what happened? Nothing happened. No ceasefire was seen, and it's it's rather escalating day day after day. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.